Uh, welcome back everybody. In this video I want to look at a polynomial long division problem that we will be applying later to the concept of complex numbers. So we want to try and figure out what is my method, what is any pattern that I use to solve this problem using a real number system and then we later apply that to the complex number system. All right, the question we're dealing with today says use long division to find the roots of the following function f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 to get a bit of an idea about this function let us graph it this is just a rough kind of thought about what this function could look like could look really like anything we do know this is a cubic function that has several shifts but what I want to try and think about is it has these points here where the function crosses the x-axis. Those are called the roots of the function. And at that point, f of x is 0 or the y value is 0. Okay, So we are not told what um, a root is of this. We have to find all of the roots of this cubic function. There should be three of them. And in order to get started with this process, we actually have to do a little bit of guess and check here. Um, I'm going to try different values of x and see if f of x is equal to 0. Okay, Because for some value of x, um, the y value is 0. So for some value of x, whatever this value of x is at those points, the y value will be 0. So let me just go ahead and try it. And there's some obvious ones you can try. Okay, try x equals 1. All right, therefore, let me substitute in wherever I see an x. Let me try pop that in there. Okay, therefore, f of 1 would equal 1 cubed. Take 4 times 1 squared plus 1 plus 6. Let me see if this equals 0. This is equal to 1 take 4 plus 1 plus 6 okay that is not equal to 0 so that is not a root of this okay so of this function up here x equals 1 is not a root so let me try another one and and uh, this is probably the next one I would go to try x equals negative 1 okay these are the ones you go for you could even think about 0 if you didn't have a term at the end there you would definitely Try 0 as your first, but positive 1, negative 1, positive 2, negative 2. Start from there and work your way up. You try negative 1 in this function. So I say therefore f of negative 1 equals negative 1 cubed minus 4 times negative 1 squared plus 1. Correction plus negative 1 there. Plus 6. So this time, instead of substituting in positive 1, I've substituted negative 1 wherever I saw an x in this polynomial function. Simplify this out. This is negative 1 minus 4 minus 1 plus 6. And this is equal to 0. Therefore, yes, this is a root of this function. Therefore, x plus 1 is a root of this polynomial. Okay, you'll notice that I've got x plus 1 here because when I take this negative 1 to the other side of the equal sign, it becomes x plus 1. So that would equal 0. Okay, so x plus 1 is the root. And now I want to try and find the other two roots. I will not be using guess and check for this because that would take too long. These could be much more complicated roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use long division to solve the next two. So let me set this up in a long division set up here. I take my first root that I now found using guess and check this x plus 1. I put
put that on the outside. On the inside, I'm going to write my my function here. I'm just going to copy and paste this so I don't make any mistakes. All right, and there is my polynomial that I want to divide. So what I want to do right now is I want to take this first number. I'm not really worried about the one at this point. I'm just interested in, in this first number here. It could even be an x squared, okay? It doesn't really matter what it is, but I'm going to look at the first term of my polynomial and divide it by this first number. So x cubed divided by x is x squared. Once I've written that on top, I multiply this back down. Okay, so when I go um, this way, I'm using the divide, and when I come back down again, I'm using multiplication. x squared times x is x cubed, and I apply that to the plus 1 as well. So x squared times positive 1 is just 1x squared. Put that in brackets, draw a line, and subtract the whole bracket. Remember, the brackets kind of help you remember to apply this negative that's at the front there to the second term as well. If you don't draw the brackets, you might forget that. Okay, so that's a useful little thing to do there. Uh, x cubed minus x cubed is 0, and then negative 4x squared minus x squared is negative 5x squared. What I like to do is I like to write the next term down by bringing that down. You don't have to worry about the 6, but bring, out, bring down the next term because we're going to work with that in our next step. So just bring down that x. Now we rinse and repeat. We take this x, and how many times is x going to negative 5x squared? Or what is left over? It's negative 5x. And now multiply again both of those terms, I get negative 5x squared minus 5x. Put it in bracket, put a negative sign there because we're going to subtract, draw a line. Negative 5x squared plus 5x squared, that's 0. And positive x, and this is again, this bracket is helping us remember we are taking away this negative 5x. So I'm going to effectively add it. So I end up with plus 6x. Right, and this is looking pretty good because I know I need no remainder at the end. That is the definition of a root is I do not have a remainder once I've divided this. What I still need to do though, I'm still going to bring down this positive 6 a plus 6 there. Alright, last time. x goes into this 6x six, 6 times. So 6. And then multiply down again. 6 times the x is 6x. Six, and 6 times the positive 1 is plus 6. Put a bracket. Subtract. Draw a nice line to keep it neat. Leaves me with zero, zero. So no remainder. This is good. This is telling me that I've done everything correct. If I ended with a remainder here, I would know that I've done something wrong, probably in my calculations somewhere here. Okay, so check for an error if you're getting a remainder. Make sure you've written this um, polynomial correctly here. Make sure you've written the root correctly here. Then check your working if there is a remainder because you've made a mistake somewhere. All right, so what is what is this telling me? This is saying that x plus 1 times this quotient that we've now got on top, this other factor, which is a trinomial factor because it has three terms, x squared minus 5x plus 6, okay, would equal, if I multiply this out, this would equal the original polynomial, this big cubic polynomial, okay? Um, but... What you can see here is I could probably factorize this second factor a little bit further. And I wouldn't even have to do long division or anything like that. Um, just looking at that, I can see, hey, I can pull out two brackets quite easily. So 
that this is x take 2 times x take 3. Okay, you can see if I was to multiply out these two brackets, I would get back to this factor here. So we've now solved what all three factors for this big um, polynomial that we started with. Okay, so therefore x plus 1, x take 2. and x take 3 are roots of our polynomial x cubed take 4x squared plus x plus 6. We are going to apply this idea behind what are roots and how to do this long division. We are going to use this in the complex number system now um, and try and solve more complicated problems using the same kind of ideas and methods in the next video.